and welcome to Mangum News. I'm your host, Elijah Mangum. This week, we'll be discussing the biggest stories from the past month, including the trial of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, Elon Musk buying Twitter, the shooting that brought an early end to the Mudbug Festival, a special event honoring the late former Mississippi Governor and First Lady, William and Elise Winter, a draft ruling of Dobbs vs. Jackson Women's Health Organization leaked, my review for the rest of Moon Knight, and my exclusive interview with WLBT Chief Meteorologist Dave Roberts. Without further ado, let's begin. Pirates of the Caribbean star Johnny Depp's $50 million defamation trial against his ex-wife Aquaman star Amber Heard began on April 12th in Fairfax County, Virginia. The trial is over Heard's 2018 op-ed in the Washington Post in which she stated that she was a victim of domestic abuse, strongly hinting at her previous allegations against Depp. Heard countersued for $100 million. Depp and his witnesses testified, saying that not only were her allegations untrue, but Depp himself was a victim of domestic abuse. During Depp's testimony, he discussed his life and career, including his departure from the Pirates and Fantastic Beast franchises. And the fact is, Mr. Depp, if Disney came to you with $300 million and a million alpacas, nothing on this earth would get you to go back and work with Disney on a Pirates of the Caribbean film. Correct? That is true, Mr. Robin Bourne. Heard began testifying last week, where she got emotional, describing instances where she claimed Depp abused her. I didn't want to leave him. I didn't want this to be the reality. I didn't want to have the man I was in love with. I know you don't come back from that. You know, I'm not dumb. I, I know you can't hit... A woman, I, you can't hit a man, you can't hit anyone, you can't just hit somebody because they, I knew there was no, I knew it was wrong and I knew that I had to leave him. And that's what broke my heart because I didn't want to leave him. On April 14th, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, Elon Musk, is bid to purchase Twitter for $44 billion was approved unanimously by Twitter's board of directors. Musk originally proposed $43 million bid before acquiring 9.1% of Twitter's stock before Twitter announced a poison pill strategy. The second annual Mudbug Festival kicked off at the Mississippi State Fairgrounds on April 30th. Attendees enjoyed live music, rides, and lots of crawfish. However, the last day of the festival was canceled following a fatal officer-involved shooting on April 29th. Two juveniles were arrested for the shooting that left one dead and four others injured. It's very, it's very devastating and it's very tragic. This is what's, be, what's to be considered a family-oriented event where families from all different walks of life can come to a common location and enjoy entertainment and enjoy food. And you have the reckless endangerment and reckless behavior of individuals with no regard for the lives and safety of those attending the event and I think that it is a very coward and very selfish act on behalf of those that are involved to involve so many innocent people in innocent lives that are here again to enjoy themselves and have fun here on the fairgrounds. The Mississippi Department of History and Archives hosted a special event to honor the late former Mississippi governor William Winter and First Lady Elise Winter on May 3rd. The event was held at the two museums of Mississippi history and civil rights. Speakers included former President Bill Clinton, former Mississippi Governor Haley Barber, 
and former Mississippi Supreme Court Justice Reuben Anderson. The hell of your last turn out, assuming you don't have a terrible piece of bad luck, is largely a function of how you decide to keep score. And we're all all the time keeping score on ourselves. And it's not like playing golf when nobody's looking. You can't just kick the ball back in the fairway. <laughs> if you're keeping score on yourself, you know what the deal is. And they did. It's hard for me to explain, but I was always mildly surprised and deeply grateful that they were friends and supporters of mine. Later that night, a draft ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court case, Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, was leaked and first reported by Politico. The draft by Justice Samuel Alito suggests that the court could be overturning the 1973 U.S. Supreme Court case Roe v. Wade. This is the first time in history of the court that a document such as this was leaked. An official ruling on the case is not expected until the summer. Moon Knight episodes 3 through 6 ended the series with many unexpected directions. Episode 3 was the show's weakest, but still managed to have great action sequences. Episode 4 brought a fun, action-packed adventure reminiscent of the Indiana Jones or Mummy franchises with a shocking twist. Episode 5 expands the MCU's world building while also bringing emotional weight with flashbacks that tell Moon Knight's origin story. Finally, the finale satisfyingly concludes the season with great action, moments, and reveals. Overall, I'll give the series an 8.5 out of 10. So, first off, can you describe how you got started in meteorology? Oh, my gosh. You really? You're in for that story? Okay. <laughs> You had to pick the, uh, I'll try to keep this as short as possible, but not that it, I can't. So when I was um, a teenager, I was always fascinated by meteorology, fascinated by weather. And um, I had parents that were very supportive and they kind of pushed and, and enabled this uh, interest of mine, this hobby. And so what I wound up doing is um, I interned at the National Weather Service. Uh, I interned at a TV station. And then I even interned, in the, interned at a climatology department at a university. And I came to the conclusion, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. This is too much to that, that. I was overwhelmed. Okay. You ever been overwhelmed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think, everybody in, I think everybody in today's day and age is overwhelmed. Anyway, um, so I went to college and I put that on the back burner, right? I said, all right, I'm not going to do that. I didn't choose a meteorology program for my undergrad. I chose marketing and journalism and then my senior year we had a tv lab and they needed someone to do the weather and nobody wanted to do it i don't know why but nobody wanted to do it so guess what <laughs> i said over here i'll do it and the professor said i am sick and tired every week of trying to find someone to do the weather he said you do the weather do it well i'll give you an a for the course okay and that's that and so every everything was every wednesday i would show up i did the weather what did i do I graduate college, okay, told myself we're not going to become a TV weatherman. What's the first job I apply for in the middle of Iowa, Missouri, on the border? I apply for a TV job, chief meteorologist, okay, and first job I applied for, first place they sent a tape to, and guess what? They hired me, and the rest is history. So I went to Alabama for a little bit from there. Then I went to JTV. I was chief meteorologist at, J at WJTV in the early to mid 90s. You probably weren't born yet. Um, and then uh, I left to go to Cincinnati. I went to Florida. And then when the opportunity presented itself uh, in 2010 at Fox 40, I said, well, let's do something crazy. And I moved back to Mississippi 
And there was always something about me when I left Mississippi the first time that told me I needed to come back. I can't explain it to you. I really can't. Um, so I agreed to come back for 24 months. And that was 12 years ago. Uh, we're, we're glad to have you. And I'm one of these where I've talked about this many times that mm -hmm. I, I love where I live. I love my state. And so I'm one of these where uh, when I pursue going into journalism, I won't, uh, I'm one of these where I would like to stay locally. So yeah. that's kind well, of how I am. If I'm like, going to tell you right now, um, you know, when I moved away from Mississippi, one thing I learned is the food never tasted as good and the people weren't as friendly. And I still stand by that because it was, um, I don't know. It was very disheartening going working. And I've worked in other places and, and, you know, here, I really like the people I work with. I have to tell you that. And I'm not just saying that I've worked at places where I did not like the people, hmm. but here I really liked the people. And um, so when my 24 months came up, I didn't, I didn't jump at the chance to leave. And I really haven't looked for a job. Um, and the people here in Mississippi have been great for great to me. Um, they, they, I don't know. I just find the people overall here are just friendly. They're nice. And like I said, I'm hitting my belly here. I don't want to show it to you, but I'm hitting it because you can't get a bad meal in Mississippi. It's actually in the constitution from what I heard. What would you describe the day in the life of Dave Roberts to be? Chaotic. <laughs> One word, chaotic. I mean, it's a little busy. Um, today, I'm actually working by myself. Typically, we have two meteorologists on duty almost, almost all the time. Mornings, not always, but during the afternoon and evening, we do. So from the moment I, you want to know what a day is like? You looking for yeah, a, a, it, I know that um, bad weather days and mm -hmm. just normal everyday sort of deal is. Uh, so I'm sitting here while I'm talking to you. I have to act like a fly. So I have radar off to the side. So you see me looking off to the side doing the radar, okay? And then I'm also doing scheduling while talking to you. I would love to tell you that I'm totally focused on you. I am as best as I can be, but there's always something going on. That's the whole thing. I wish there wasn't always something going on. We do have days where things are pretty quiet. Things are, are relatively calm, but they don't always work out that way. Sometimes the days that you think are gonna be the smoothest can be the roughest. And the reason why is there's so many things on top of being a TV meteorologist. People say, oh, you just get on TV for a couple minutes a night, big deal. Why are you so stressed? And I'm thinking, I wish that was the job. If you know of a place that where that's just the only job I have to do, I'm gonna take that job, but that's not, that's not real. Um, I, I am in charge of organizing things. So I gotta keep the calendar going. Gotta make sure we're always staffed for every uh, newscast. I'm watching the radar in case I have to break in or I won't have to break in because we're doing fine. There's not much going on at least around here, but you know, thunderstorms are blossoming on the radar. I'm doing um, that. I'm also, while talking to you, I'm planning out for tomorrow's Pepsi Pops. So, I mean, there's always, there's enough going on around here. And then of course, breaking weather changes everything. You know, thunderstorms that you expect to be severe, okay. But then all of a sudden they turn real severe and it's a whole other animal. And things do get carried away sometimes because this is Mississippi, you know. Talk about some of the most memorable weather stories you've covered. Well, okay. So there's been two. There's been two here that will stand out probably in my mind forever. And um, I'm going to take them not in order. But, well, let me take them in order. The Bassfield tornado. Horrifying. Horrifying two EF4 tornadoes paralleling each other. I've never seen that before. I've never been working on a day like that where it's been in my viewing area before. And I knew, I mean, I knew people were being injured. I hope they weren't being killed, but I knew what was going on. You know what I mean? When you see that, there's nothing you can tell someone. You can't tell them there's a tornado coming your way and expect them to be able to do something 100% foolproof. Does that make sense? If it's an EF1 or it's a lower end tornado, you just tell people, go do your normal precautions. But when you start getting into these EF4s, I mean, you know what they can do in an EF5. I mean, you know, we didn't know it was that at the time. We didn't know it was an EF4. But remember, if you remember that storm, they were reporting ridiculous winds that were showing up on the Doppler radar. So I knew how bad it was. And then somebody texted me and said, we've got fatalities. And it just confirmed uh, my horrible suspicion. I went down there either the next day or the day after. 
um, and met with all the people. And, you know, people are so nice. There I am. I'm working. Okay. So I'm doing the thing for the TV station. And they're offering me food and they're offering me. Th These are people that have lost their homes. They're sitting out front with tents and they're cooking food. And I was like, I can't take anybody's food. You know what I mean? Like, but there were, that's what they were doing. They're like, yo, we know you're visiting. And uh, so again, back to the people, you know, I can't say enough about the people here. Um, my next memorable one was the tornado we had that passed right by the TV station, what, two months ago? And I stayed on the air. I don't know if you were watching that. Yes, on that I was. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had a lot of positive feedback from it. From the older folks, though, the mom, the mom types, they were like, you should have taken cover, bad boy. But you know what? I, I made a decision, split, split second decision, and we stayed on the air. I feel like it was the right thing to do. I'm still alive. Um, but um, that was kind of a hairy experience. And that's something, those two experiences have never happened before in my career. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all on Sunday.